Tensions are rising in the Taiwan Strait as China intensifies its military maneuvers. Now, on Thursday, China encircled Taiwan with naval vessels and military aircraft in a show of force, declaring that the blood of independence forces on the self-ruled island would flow. That's mm, not very neighborly. These two days of drills are part of China's escalating campaign of intimidation, which has included a series of large-scale military exercises around Taiwan in recent years. The latest drills come on the heels of Lai ching inauguration as Taiwan's new president earlier this week. His inauguration speech, which emphasized Taiwan's sovereignty, has been denounced by China as a confession of independence. To take a deeper look into the implications of China's maneuvers and what they mean for regional stability, we're joined by Gordon Chang, author of The Coming Collapse of China and also China is Going to War. Now, you can follow him on X at Gordon G. Chang. Gordon, thank you very much for joining the Situation Report today. And uh, I'm going to start, if you don't mind, uh, with a sort of a broad question. There's a lot of room here to move. But these military exercises that we've just been speaking about, what do they mean and are they significant given that it's not the first time we've seen this? They are significant, Mike, and I think for a number of reasons. First of all, they begin at the administration of William Lai, who was inaugurated on Monday. Now, in his speech, he was clear about uh, Taiwan's sovereignty, but he was also, uh, he took pains to emphasize that he was going to support the status quo which is music to the ears of the State Department, because they always talk about the status quo. And China, of course, is trying to change it. But I think that these exercises are significant from a military point of view, because they go beyond what we have seen in the past. You know, after Speaker Pelosi's visit to Taiwan, um, the Chinese military exercised um, around the island, trying to basically practice a blockade. They did this also this time, but they were also more thorough this time because they were not only of China's intentions. So, so you don't see this necessarily as just a, a status quo, more of the same. Uh, but do you think this gets us one step closer? I, 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 again, I know this is a 30,000 foot level question, but does this move us closer, both their drills, their exercises, and also their, 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 the, the way that they're phrasing all of this, does it move us one step closer to Xi's eventual move on Taiwan? And what's the timeline for that, do you think? Yeah, um, well, it certainly moves uh, the Chinese one step closer. Um, the question is, what are Xi Jinping's intentions? We know that Xi Jinping has already made the decision to risk war in East Asia. And we can see this from his various moves, not so much about Taiwan, but in the Philippines, in the South China Sea, which we'll talk about in a moment. Um, but you know, if we step back, you know, a lot of people say that China's going to invade this year. Um, that's possible. But I think that Xi has understood that his military is not ready to undertake a combined air, land, sea operation, something which China's never done before uh, against such a hard target. And my sense is that he's now trying to pick on easier targets, such as the Philippines, which is not as militarily ready to defend itself. So we see this very, very provocative and belligerent activity at Second Thomas Shoal, Scarborough Shoal, Whitson Reef, and other locations that Beijing claims. Um, what's really worrying me is that um, this, our State Department nine times in the Biden administration has said that the United States was prepared to defend uh, the Philippines. And we actually talk about the use of force. Um, President Biden himself has at least twice, maybe three times, um, but twice that I can think of, um, that, where he said that he would use force against China to defend uh, the Philippines and to discharge our obligations under our 1951 Mutual Defense Treaty. And China is just continuing to ignore Biden and the State Department. They're continuing with these provocative maneuvers, which means that deterrence is broken down. So. Um, we have to be prepared for anything at any place at any time. My sense is the Philippines, but it could be elsewhere. Look, I, I mean, I, I take your point, Gordon, on the, the, the idea that def uh, deterrence has broken down. Um, I don't think that she uh, believes that the Biden administration would step in uh, and uh, defend Taiwan, what do you think? Would the U.S. administration, or whether it's the Biden administration or whatever comes after, 
would they, would the U.S. put boots on the ground to support Taiwan? Um, I think Chinese doctrine, I don't know, but I think Chinese doctrine is to attack the United States in the first minutes of an action against Taiwan. Um, and if that's the case, it's, it's President, it really doesn't have any choice. And the reason I think mm -hmm. that is, in order for China to have an effective invasion, one that succeeds, he needs to impose a blockade. For that blockade to be successful, it needs to include Japanese, sovereign Japanese territory, especially the island of Yonagumi. Um, and the, Japan and the United States have a mutual defense treaty. You know, a blockade of a Japanese island would be an act of war. Um, and I think Japan is prepared to come to Taiwan's assistance. So um, my sense is that we would be in a war in Taiwan. And it's not so much a question of people in Washington saying, are we going to defend it or not? Um, I think that it's more going to be we're going to have to react to a Chinese attack. If China doesn't impose that a blockade it, yeah. of that sort, then, you know, I tend to think the United States will defend Taiwan, but um, we really don't know, of course. Is there, is there a possibility that this does not involve a uh, military invasion, that somehow th there's a, a soft approach, a soft invasion that, that eventually just subsumes Taiwan? Well, some people actually think that that is the most probable scenario, that China imposes a blockade and does not invade and just hopes to strangle Taiwan and hopes that the international community will not come to Taiwan's assistance. So that is one of these sly, cunning Chinese tactics that might or might not work. Um, there's a lot of mm -hmm. thinking beyond, be, behind that. Um, my sense is that uh, a blockade does lead to war, um, but you know you can think of scenarios where it doesn't. What, what do you think she takes away from the current conflict, uh, Putin's invasion of Ukraine, um, and the international support um, over the past couple of years that uh, came to Ukraine's aid. How does he interpret that in terms of his views on Taiwan? I'm worried that he takes away the wrong lessons from that, Mike. If you remember just after Russia's invasion, uh, you know, everyone was saying, oh, Xi Jinping is looking at Taiwan as being a more difficult target because the Russians aren't doing very well. And, you know, the West and the rest of the international community were imposing sanctions. I didn't think that. I didn't think that because the sanctions weren't as tight as they had to be, and they certainly weren't enforced with the vigor that was required. And we certainly, you know, especially now, from the perspective of 2024, we can see that Biden has been hesitant in terms of allowing Ukraine to fight the way it wants to and has not been supplying the weapons that Ukraine needs. Also, he sees that there is a lot of um, opposition in the U.S. to continued support for Ukraine. So my big takeaway is that he thinks he can get away with an invasion of Taiwan, um, looking at not only um, Ukraine, but also that we have failed to protect our interests in North Africa. North Africa is essentially a war because you have China and Russia fueling insurgencies that look like wars, and also from Biden's incomprehensible reactions to um, Iran's attack on Israel.